I've met many of you. We've emailed, we've PM'd, we've been on the phone, some we've never met face to face. So I particularly want to welcome our interstate guests, Cancho Robert Sullivan and Sifu Rick Spain. Uh, thank you all for coming in and being here. Where's my hunchy standing behind me? <laughs> my first sensei from 1971. I feel like I'm in a grave. <laughs> <laughs> who was Tino Severano? Everyone asked me. I've had patients for months saying, who, who, who is this guy? What are you doing? And I thought about it. Take Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> blend him with Tarzan. <laughs> throw in a Robin Hood oh. and mix in a bit of Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> Add two drops of sinister sauce oh. and then you have Tino Severano. <laughs> People ask me, well, what did he do? Why are you writing a book? Well, let me paint a, a very simple picture. North Bourne in the 60s was a very quiet place, conservative, white Anglo-Saxon. Not a lot happening other than probably the, the hot bread kitchen in Greythorn Shopping Centre. And then someone landed with a crash and set the place ablaze. It was never the same again. Come into the era of the 70s, the Bruce Lee films, this, this man created a bushfire that just spread all over Melbourne and every peninsula around. Not, every, not only did everyone want to train with Tino Sebrano, they wanted to be Tino Sebrano. And I know that from hundreds of people. We're here today to celebrate greatness. And we often don't see single people who do great things and make a difference and affect and influence so many people. And that's what we're celebrating here today. Hunchy said to me, maybe a couple of years ago, just in conversation. I wish I could just have all my sons in one room again. I know it'll never happen. Well, Hunchy, you're 81 years old. Happy birthday. And all your sons and daughters are here today. This has been a year with a difference, and a real difference. We've had Elvis, we've had Maverick, and we've had the Tino Severano launch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure which is bigger. But to top it off, this has been a week with a difference. We've had the Queen's funeral, we've had the grand final, and the Tino Severano book launch. <laughs> Make it easy for me, don't you? Please. All right. People ask me, was this an easy or a hard task? A very good question. Very, very briefly, I'm, I was talking with a man who's not short of a word. <laughs> the hard part was not getting a few words out of Hunchy, it was telling him when to stop. <laughs> we hit a thousand pages and he said, are we finished? I, I said, I think so. The printer said, chop it in half. That's enough already. So what was the hard task? We knew each other as teacher and student, not as man to man. We developed a rapport and trust over a few years. Hunchy's a man. He has emotions, he has vulnerabilities, he's had successes, he's had failures, he's had challenges. But we broke it down and to the best of our ability we've told a real authentic story. This is not out of a martial arts magazine. This is a gentleman who's bared his heart and soul and I hope you'll enjoy the adventure. But the other hard task was actually finding all of you. I didn't know you. He talked to me about the Canterbury Dojo. I didn't know who was there. And one by one, you all helped me to find Bob and Jack and Smith, and, and uh, we had to use yellow pages and, and Facebook. But it was not an easy task to find you. But what was the easy part? When I did find you, you opened your homes and your hearts to me, your photo albums, you shared precious memories that perhaps even your partners never heard. And, and I thank you for that, because this book and story was so much about all of you. I want to thank a few people, a few key people. Firstly, the man, the legend himself. Uh, in 1971, when I was 10 years old, I was practicing my kicks with my younger sister. And unbeknown to me, my father told Hunchy, and did I get a bawling out at the end of the Saturday morning session? I just wanted to crawl into the ground. And that's how I always felt about Hunchy with his booming, charismatic voice. So 50 years later, to be able to talk to each other and have that trust and rapport. I thank you, Hunchy, for the journey and the adventure. 
I want to thank Cherie Sensei, my trusted and beautiful editor, who's put in more hundreds of hours than anyone could imagine to unscramble my jumbled words and thoughts. She's always been articulate and has beautiful crystal focus and I couldn't have completed this project without you. Thank you, Sensei. <laughs> I want to thank my IGK Victorian seniors who, this is a, a selfish aspect, but they've kept me uh, true on my karate journey and uh, I'm the only man in the club who's been back to white belt three times but, and, and, and still hasn't got to black belt after 51 years in the same dojo. But they've kept me on my journey and in particular helped me keep this story authentic and historically accurate as possible. The last thing I want to say is that when I was a child, we used to read the Dojo Kun above the shrine in the dojo. It didn't mean a lot to me. There was guff about being simple and manly and traditional times in Japan. We read it, we didn't know what it meant. But 50 years on, I've met all of you and I couldn't, I couldn't have met more courteous and humble and respectful people. So I know that the principles that we learnt in karate 50 years ago are well and alive in this community and I thank you all for that. There are extra books available at the desk if you want to buy any other books. We've got a great launch team at the back and thank you guys for assisting. And uh, that's all I want to say. Have a great day and I want to introduce you to my good friend.